and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be talking about something that probably pops right into your mind when you think about physics, and it is motion. A lot of physics has to do with objects that are in motion, maybe analyzing the motion of objects, predicting how motion is going to change in the future, or how far something is going to move, etc. You get the idea. So, what are some basic ways that we can measure motion? Well, as you probably know, we can measure how quickly or how fast something is moving, as well as how far that thing has moved. So let's use an everyday example to help us better understand motion. If you've ever seen a car dashboard, then you've already seen ways in which motion can be measured. Every car dashboard has these two things that can measure motion, and that would be the speedometer and the odometer. The speedometer measures obviously the speed or how fast the object is traveling. In this case, it could be your car, your motorcycle, etc. The odometer measures how far your car or vehicle has traveled. So how does your car exactly measure these things using the speedometer and the odometer? Let's start with the speedometer. In order to measure a speed, your car is going to need two pieces of information. One is going to be the total distance traveled or some kind of distance traveled and the amount of time that it takes for that distance to be traveled. So what you do is you take the distance that was traveled divided by the time that it took for that distance to be traveled and that will give you the speed. That's why when you're describing something that's in motion, the unit that's attached to the number, for example, the speed of something or the velocity of something is always going to be some kind of unit of distance over a unit of time. So some common ones you might have already seen would be like miles per hour. And again, miles is some kind of distance per hour, some kind of time. Or if you live somewhere else, maybe kilometers per hour, kilometers being a unit of distance and hour again still being time and more commonly in physics you'd see meters per second so meters that measure of distance and seconds is the standard unit of time basically if you have a distance and a time you can calculate a speed so how does your car gather this information in order to calculate speed at any given time your car gathers information from its tires and so it knows the circumference of your tire so for example if your car was to move your tire is going to rotate if your car was to roll the tire at full circumference, it would travel a certain amount of distance. Your car knows the circumference of your tire. There is your value for distance. Then your car has a timer that can time how long it takes your axle or your tire to do one full rotation, and it times that. So then you take the distance traveled, which is the circumference of the tire, and how long it took for that circumference to fully rotate. And so you have distance, circumference and time, how long it took for the circumference to be traveled, and you divide those values and you get the speed of your car at any given time. Let's use an example with numbers because I know that, at least for me, that helps. Let's say that you know that your car has a tire circumference of three meters, which is pretty average, and it took about two seconds for your car to fully rotate that circumference. So you're going to take your distance, which is three meters, divided by the amount of time it took, which is two seconds, and you'll figure out how fast your car was moving in that moment. So it'd be three divided by two or 1.5 meters per second. If we were to translate that into something that we might be more familiar with, miles per hour, that would be about 3.36 miles per hour, which is not very fast at all. But hopefully you get the idea of how to calculate speed using this information of distance and time. Let's shift gears and talk about the odometer, which is measuring, again, the total distance traveled. So odometer, I would say, is a little bit more simple. If you know the amount of rotations that your car tires have traveled, as well as the circumference of those tires, you can very easily calculate the total distance traveled by your car. All you have to do is multiply those two values together. So your circumference of your tire times how many times the tire has rotated total. Let's do another example with numbers using that same higher circumference that we used before, three meters. So if our tire circumference is three meters, and let's say that it has rotated a total of 2,783 rotations in its lifetime, then all we have to do is multiply those two numbers together, and it would give us the total distance traveled by your car. And that final distance would be 8,349 meters. And if I was to convert that into miles, that would be about 5.2 miles. That's all I have for you today about ways to measure motion. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, please go ahead and subscribe for more science videos just like this one. Until the next video, always remember, this is fine, and I can do it. Bye!